All right, let's talk about CDS cells. I call them CDS cells because that's kind of like the more formal name. Uh, but to be honest, most of the world uh, calls them photo cells. Uh, so unlike all the other things we've used, everything else we've talked about has been IR. So infrared, can't see it. Um, these are more for measuring visible light, right? So light you can see. They will measure IR, but they're not necessarily like specially made for IR. They're kind of made for about anything, right? So a CDS cell, what is it? Here's a big one, right? So this one's like the size of a quarter. Um, and then here's a more typical smaller one. So they're often pretty small. And what they do is, depending on how much light hits their surface, they change their resistance. And that's all they do, right? So if, if very little light hits them, they have a very high resistance, like mega ohms. Um, if a lot of light hits them, like you take them out in the sun, right? Um, then their resistance is gonna drop to like a few kilo ohms, right? Like maybe 10 kilo ohms is low for them, um, whereas like a mega ohm is high for them. So they change the resistance based on light. They're quite easy to use. Um, you just set up a little voltage divider um, and that's how you're gonna use the thing. I love things that are nice and simple like this, like thermistors like are the same idea, but with temperature, they just change the resistance based on their, their signal um, and they're just so easy to use, I love it. A basic voltage divider, hopefully this is something you've learned about in your other electronics classes, uh, but all it does is it takes your signal at the top, uh, which is typically a regulated 5 volts, so a very accurate 5 volts, and it divides it over like an R1 and an R2. And so the signal that you get out is going to be based on how much drop is there um, across like the top half, right? Or, or you could think of it as the bottom half. And there are nice little formulas that you can make uh, that determine what these things are. If you wanted to cut right to the chase, uh, you could say that the voltages of the signal, it's equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vn. It's actually fairly easy to derive that uh, if you wanted to derive it. Um, we can derive it here real quick. So our total voltage um, is 5 volts and that's going to drop across the whole thing um, and that current is going to be based on the resistance of R1 and R2 so the current you could say is 5 divided by R1 plus R2 and then you've got to figure out how much voltage is there right here well the voltage right here you could look at as the drop across this resistance um, so that delta V is equal to I times R2 um, and then that delta V is equal to um, 5 plus so I'm just copying this over there um, R1 plus R2 uh, times R2 a little rearranging and all of a sudden you've got the voltage of the signal is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times in this case 5 volts so that is the formula that you need um, anytime you're using a CDS cell. And we derived it even, uh, but that's how it works. So the trick is you've got to kind of know about how big your resistance of your CDS cell is going to be so that you can pick a good value for your R1. Because your R1 you're just going to pick, you're going to put it in the circuit, and then R2, which is the CDS, is going to change. Um, and that's going to tell you how much light there is in the room. The way you start is you look at the data sheet, right? We've played this game before, right? So you look at the data sheet and you say, hey, Mr. Data Sheet, um, how big are you likely to be in the dark? If you look at the data sheet, it'll promise you that it'll be at least 200K, which is pretty big, um, in the dark. I've actually found that they're usually more like mega ohms, right? Like they're big. Um, and in a bright room, it'll get low, like 10K. Now, 10K you might think is fairly big, uh, but that's just kind of the range they work over, right? So then your challenge is to try to pick a value uh, for that top resistor that will work well. So let's let you do some math yourself. Let's say that you pick 10K, right? That's a good, good ballpark number. Um, what would you expect to see as the signal? Like, what would you expect the voltage to be um, when the lights are on? Oh, shoot, I've got that backwards. Um, sorry. Um, 
let's switch this. Uh, let's say lights off. So whenever whenever it's dark, the number is higher. Um, and then we'll say lights on. Sorry, if the lights are off and it's at 500, what would you expect that signal to be? Um, and if the lights are on and it dropped down to 10K, uh, what would you expect that signal to be? I'll give you a minute to work the problem. All right, I'm gonna work it as well. Um, so it's really not hard. It's just V sig um, is equal to um, R2, which is this guy. <clears throat> so let's do the off one first over their sum, which is 510 times five. So there it's 4.9, so that's the dark. Um, and then if we wanted the light, so in the light, it would be more like V sig is equal to 10K over their combined total, which is 20 times five. I don't need a calculator to do that. That's two and a half volts. Um, so you can see that the swing here is actually not that amazing um, because with this size, it's gonna vary at most um, you know, two and a half volts. Um, and then you'll have to decide for your project, is that something I'm happy about? Is that a big enough swing uh, that I can measure that? Or do I need to pick a different size that will give me an even bigger swing? Um, and likewise, you know, you have to pick a number, try it, um, and then you have to do an experiment and then change it. To be honest, for most people's project, they say, yeah, that's a big enough swing, and they just kind of move on. Um, if you wanted a slightly bigger swing, what you should do is you should say, hey, what if I made it 5K? Uh, would that give me a bigger swing or a smaller swing? To be honest, for most people's project, they just pick something and then they try it, and if it works, they move on, right? So there are a lot of great uses that CDS cells can do, which is why I wanted to tell you about them, even though we don't use them in the labs, um, because they're really great at uh, telling you just are the lights on or off in the room, so you know like if it's dark in the room or not, so they're good at that. They're also really good at seeing like, is there an object above me? So like, let's say you've got a golf ball game and you wanna know if a golf ball's on there. Well, you can see how much light there is in the room just because there are lights, and then when a golf ball comes over you, it just kind of all goes dark, right? It doesn't matter if the golf ball's white or black. I mean, it goes dark when that thing drops on you, so that's nice. If you're really fancy, you could also use them in things like color sensing. This is a neat game, but you can shine a red light on them, see how much reflects. Uh, then you can shine a blue light on an object, see how much reflects. Uh, and then you can shine like a green uh, light on it, see how much reflects. So if you take a sample with like blue and then with red and then with green, then you can try to tell what color it is based on how much got reflected for the different things. I won't go into it, but it's neat. And then without a doubt, the number one use of them is uh, laser pointer brake beams. Um, so they, when they get hit with a laser pointer, man, that baby lights up like the sun and the resistance just, just plummets, um, which is great. So it's a really, really easy way to see if it's getting hit by a laser pointer or not. So this is nice for shooting games, so like you can shoot these things. It's also nice that if you want like um, to know when something breaks the beam, um, these things work great. And like they will work well up to like, I mean, I, would, I shouldn't say a mile, right? But, but maybe a mile. <laughs> um, so they are just huge range. So the others are like good to like, you know, 10 inches, maybe a few feet. Um, and then all of a sudden you've got a solution that works at, at virtually any distance. Um, and so laser pointers get used in a lot of mechatronics projects because they, they work well and they, they work with the CDS and they're fun to use. All right, so that's all I really wanted to tell you about CDSs. Uh, they're a great thing that you can use in projects. Maybe we'll have to add a lab assignment for them too. Uh, but at least now you know how to use another tool in your bag of tricks. All right, see you next time. Bye.